my dear friend in this session we will read about communicable disease and one common question which come in communicable disease is from the incubation period uh, like they can ask they have asked in past incubation period of diphtheria cholera plague and uh, hepatitis b c they have asked so how to remember all these incubation period together because we remember it and we forget it so the first way of remembering anything is to understand the purpose of remembering that thing then you will give it importance and you will remember it better now let's read the incubation period of all the disease i request all of you to first remember it then write it by your own memory you will first remember it then you will write it by yourself it's not difficult first thing is medical council of india mci because let's say if you sneezed on me within how many day i will start sneezing 1 to 3 day so for influenza it is 1 to 3 day and same 1 to 3 day is also correct for cholera and meningococcal meningitis three disease one to three day that's why the mnemonic is mci medical council of india okay now if you double one to three it will become two to six and this is the period for diphtheria then two to Seven is the period for plague. You can see it. It is written here. Plague is of three type: bubonic, septicemic, and pneumonic. Bubonic means plague, of course, caused by uh, Yersinia pestis, is in the lymph node. Bubbo means lymph node. Then from the lymph node. it goes to lung and is spread to the body that is known as pneumonic plague for which the incubation period is 1 to 3 days and then it go all over the body that is known as septicemic plague for that the incubation period is again 2 to 7 day okay so one of the really good teacher has explained the incubation period as 40 day it was wrong and it is 2 to 7 day it is park latest edition 2 to 7 day is there so 2 to 6 day was for remember diphtheria then 2 to 7 day is for plague but it is for bubonic plague and septicemic plague 1 to 3 day is for pneumonic plague pp but if they ask only plague it's better to write 2 to 7 for plague okay so 2 to 6 diphtheria 2 to 7 plague now 7 to 14 this is for polio and pertussis so p for polio p for pertussis 7 to 14 and 14 to 21 is for mumps and rubella so it's not so difficult to remember it's very simple 1 to 3 is mci meningococcal meningitis cholera influenza then double of 1 to 3 2 to 6 is diphtheria 2 to 7 is plague 7 to 14 is polio pertussis and 14 to 21 is mumps and rubella so it's like a flow there is a flow there and you can remember it in the flow and you will not forget it 1 to 3 mci 2 to 6 diphtheria 2 to 7 plague 7 to 14 polio pertussis 14 to 21 mumps rubella you all can remember it in a flow after this we are left with only two that is uh, measles and chicken pox and there is a rhyming there also measles is 10 to 14 day and chicken pox is 14 to 16 day so 10 to 14 14 to 16 again rhyming 10 to 14 14 to 16 for chicken pox of course the maximum is 10 to 21 day but average is what they ask 14 to 16 even for cholera the maximum incubation period is 5 day this is the average incubation period which we have written here so can you remember it all try to remember it and write it by your memory pause the video remember it right now and then write it from your memory
आई एम श्योर यू ऑल कैन डू दैट वन टू थ्री फॉर एम सी आई टू टू सिक्स डिप्थेरिया टू टू सेवन प्लेग सेवन टू फोर्टीन पी फॉर पोलियो पी फॉर पटोसिस फोर्टीन टू ट्वेंटी वन मम्स रूबेला एंड देन टेन टू फोर्टीन फॉर मीजल्स फोर्टीन टू सिक्सटीन फॉर चिकन पॉक्स एंड एन एफ लो यू कैन रिमेंबर इट वी आर लेफ्ट विथ जस्ट थ्री टाइप ऑफ हेपाटाइटिस हेपाटाइटिस ए बी एंड सी which is also simple to remember hepatitis a is 10 to 50 day and if you multiply 10 to 50 every one with 3 it will become the incubation period for b 30 to 150 day and for hepatitis c it is maximum 14 day to 180 day that means 2 week to 6 month so c has the maximum incubation period hepatitis a 10 to 50 multiplied by 3 and it will become for b 30 to 150 so that's all from the incubation period part i think you all can remember it right now now after remembering the incubation period we also need to re, uh, need to learn about maximum period of communicability or infectivity so this communicability or infectivity decide isolation duration that's why we are reading it okay that's why they ask it in the exam because if you want to prevent spread of infection from an infected person you will isolate and if you want to prevent the spread of infection let's say from a african who is suffering from uh, who is coming from africa without yellow fever vaccination till next uh, next 6 day he will be if he landed in delhi without yellow fever vaccination certificate he will be quarantined for 6 day in a office near to the delhi airport so quarantine is done on person who is suspected of carrying infection why are we quarantining that african person because if he entered india then aedes mosquito can bite him and spread yellow fever in india also okay when i was working in butterfly ngo actually four children and one african uh, guardian or person of uh, uh, responsible for them came to india to attend the conference of uh, butterfly ngo which work with street children uh, the conference was in jaipur so they came uh, with an uh, vaccination certificate but the vaccination was taken just one day back so and the the incubation period for yellow fever is 6 day so till 6 day we have to quarantine them one day back they had taken vaccination but vaccination effect comes on 10th day suppose i have taken vaccination today for yellow fever the effect will come after 10 day and it will remain life long so because the incubation period is 6 day they were kept in a separate room for next 5 day and then they were released and a butterfly people send me to release them but i was like who am i why they will listen to me and, I, and even i was not trying to make them go away because then uh, there is a danger of yellow fever being spread in india so i went there with fruit and all and i said if any problem call me and i they arranged a sim for those uh, the person and they stayed there for 4 day then they joined the conference and a 5 day was the total duration they sp- stand there so that is for quarantine now for isolation we need not to have read so many disease only four we have to remember very simple chicken pox 2 day before ras 4 to 5 day after ras measles 4 day before ras 5 day after so 2 5 for chicken pox 4 5 for measles then for mumps and rubella it mumps it is 6 to 7 day before ras and 7 day after and you know, a before swelling and 7 day after rubella 6 to 7 day before and 7 day after and if you add 7 and 7 it become 14 so for diphtheria it is 14 to 28 day okay just for first chicken pox 2 day before ras 5 day after rash so l- they say in book it is written for chicken pox isolation for 6 day is done 6 day isolation is done after the rash is there 
we don't want to take any chance so for 6 day we will isolate the person it is written in park textbook and uh, then for measles it is 4 day before and 5 day after for mumps and rubella you can simply remember it one week before one week after but it will not be precise the precise duration is for mumps it is four to six day before one week after is common for them for mumps it is four to six day before and seven day after for rubella it is one week before one week after okay so that is there now after mumps and rubella the last is diphtheria which is formed by adding this so it is two week to four week so remember what was the incubation period for diphtheria can you tell it the incubation period for diphtheria was two to six days and period of infectivity is two to four week do remember these four two five for chicken pox total six day isolation four five for measles one week before one week after for mumps rubella and two to four for diphtheria okay i hope you will remember it all if you remember it in a flow you can remember it all